All right, we got word on the street. Word on the street. Hey, word on the street. Word on the street. Everybody got some word on the street. Where you Come at, on, with I don't recognize that building. I'm on Congress Avenue. Oh, Lord. Or Daggers now. Okay. <laughs> What's going on? So I'm with an old friend I used to run into quite a lot, actually, named Jay. Hi, Jay. Jay. Good morning. Hi, how are you? All right, Jay, what's the word on the street? Word on the street, huh? Um, now what, positivity-wise or negative Anything wise? going Anything. on. I know you keep it real. Let's see. Uh, well, like I said, number one, the fentanyl has always been an epidemic. We're almost, I come out here one time a week, and I'm averaging losing a friend one time a week every time I come out here, drug-wise. Number two, People getting shot out here. Please need to do something because people are getting shot left and right. Uh, there's stuff like you can't walk down the street no more. I was walking down the street a couple weeks ago. Mm. Next thing I know, I'm getting jumped for no reason. You know what I mean? <coughs> uh, getting jumped? Yes. It's just, I don't know how to explain it out here. It's always, it's, it's always been like the wild, wild west out here. I'm born and raised out here, but nowadays, one thing being homeless, I was homeless for almost 10 years, but one thing it taught me is life is beyond cheap. Life is beyond cheap. I've seen people bump shoulders out here and turn around and get their head blown off. Like, legit. Yeah. And, uh, but like even this building, this building, right? I remember when this was actually occupied, it was just for Yale students that were in the arts, right? This thing has been abandoned I can't even tell you how many years, but the thing that gets me going is I still know everybody else out in the street, homeless and stuff. But imagine if they renovated this, how many rooms they could put people yeah. up in, stuff like that. It's just. And the irony is in this spot. It's, it's, it's yeah. A spot, I'm not gonna lie. But once I pulled myself out, like a little catch up on me, I was homeless 10 years out here. Um, sleeping bandos i mean just to eat just to eat going in dumpsters you know what i mean dunkin donuts and panera bread just to eat yeah. it's uh sadly it's like kill or be killed and but what I, have you been up to lately because i know now you lately you've been doing just, good yeah just had my first kid um i moved i moved to Bramford on Leeds island road right near the water okay yeah i bought my own place it's not state but i'm proud of that you know what i mean i'm proud of that I work a little, a little 10 to three job. It's not a lot, but um, trying to change my Where life. Where are you working? p and Delhi in Brantford. Oh my God, yeah. okay. So something's better than nothing. I've always said that. But, of course. But there's still a lot of people out here that I'm still friends with and cool with. And I just feel bad because I see him like, like my buddy, I don't want to say his name. He's only 21 years old, but he like threw in the flag. Like he's done, I'm going to be out here forever. And I try to tell people, sadly, I was the poster child for a homeless mess up. You know what I mean? But if I can make it out, bro, anybody can make it out. It's how bad you want it, though. Shit ain't gonna just, it ain't gonna just fall on your face. Yeah. You know what I mean? How did you do it, though? Like, honestly, I mean, I'll never forget it. Like, when it first started happening, I was standing on the corner and a uh, guy pulled up, yo, you wanna work? Blah, blah, blah. I'm like, yeah. Hopped his truck right then and there. Moral of the story is, I used to, I never told him I was homeless, but I used to go to work and have him drop me off at this freaking band though at night, but I did it every day, saving some money, saving some money, came in some other money. First thing I did, bought us, bought us a place, me and, uh, me and Mandy, the girl I'm with, and um, I got out. But uh, even again, like, just standing on the corner, ambulance just pulled in, somebody dropped, it's like, I'm sick of seeing it, you know. And if you're if you hang out with dogs, eventually you're gonna get fleas. You know what I mean? Mm. You show me your friends, I'll show you your future type of thing. You know what I mean? And can we talk about you know the methadone clinic, right? Methadone what you're saying? Because um, he attends, if you don't mind me saying, no, no, he attends you, ask. You ask a question, I'll, <laughs> I'll answer. So, so methadone clinic, um, I've been on it almost five years. So five years because I don't touch dope. Five years. But the thing is, like I was telling you, not to reiterate, I asked two months ago to switch out of here. And I, and there's no gray area with me. I told my counselor straight up, I pulled my counselor to the window. I said, look out that window. I said, you see all those people out there? 
they're waiting for me to walk out the door and they're going to throw the shit in my face. And I yeah. said, never mind being homeless out here. There's nothing but trouble out here. There's nothing but trouble out here. I know that. And I've literally, and it ain't easy when you, you're still in that, that, you know, purgatory in the middle, like you still want to do something stupid, but you don't. And I've been asking to get out of here for a transfer for about two months. I haven't gotten it. I've been asking to go down on my dose for two months. I haven't gotten it. But if you want to, and everybody will tell you this, that uh, two months I've been asking to go down on my dose, can't get it. But if they, I ask to go up, they will literally, not even five minutes, they'll bring you up. And, and like, I got, I went to college for a little bit. I want to go back. I was going for the dark program, drug and alcohol counseling. Because You would be amazing. Yeah, the system's broke. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's why I'm trying to go full circle. The system's broke, and like even if I could save one kid out of a hundred, that's a, that's a freaking win to me. You know what I mean? Is that your next win. goal? You think? Uh-huh. Is that kind of your next goal? You want to go back? Yeah, honestly, like um, I've always been a writer, and I'm starting to write a book on everything I've been through, and uh, and I can see myself like talking to kids. You know what I mean? Being like, I don't, I wouldn't say motivational speaker, but yeah, no, but again, should. I'm just gonna tell the kids straight up. You know what I mean? Like, bro, listen. What they say, stay stay away from this, that, that. It's true. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because it's like, well, so it's like what, senior year in, in, in school, you're about to graduate. What do you want to be when you get out of here? <laughs> it's not like I told my counselor I want to be a homeless You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And it's like one day I literally, how to describe it? It's like one day I was out here and the cloud just lifted real quick. And I literally, like literally somehow moving, I looked around and I'm like, what, dude, what the fuck happened? Like, what happened? You know, it feels like I was here doing good. Yeah. And now I'm here, and it's just like a veil lifted. But, uh, well, what do you think about how there was that whole debate in New Hallville and that location going over I there? What did you that. think of that based on what you see out here? Do you think people had it right? <laughs> you know, it's, you know, you can walk down their street, okay? There's a, a younger than intermediate school right there, right? I see people throwing dirty rigs in front of the entrance door when there's a trash can right there, okay? There's people smoking drugs while parents are walking their kids to school. That's why. They already know what's coming with it. You know what I mean? And like I said, they're waiting for me out there. Motherfuckers, the methadone clinic, mm-hmm. they're going to capitalize on people's despair. You know what I mean? Misery loves company. And they're going to be waiting out there. And they, those people have a head and they already know that's going to happen. That's why they don't want it. Straight up, that's why I don't want it. I hate to say. Can it. I ask a question? Yeah, go for it. What What do you think? Um, what should the App Foundation do about the folks? Because they seem to say that they have no control outside of their buildings about what happens. Even if they had control, they ain't gonna do nothing. Like, uh, me and my buddy were actually just talking about earlier this morning. Somebody got killed years back. I don't know if you remember that. He got stabbed to death right in the entrance way the clinic no they could have stopped it they did absolutely nothing he bled out died right there because wow he was pimping out his girl the ex and the ex-boyfriend just came out of jail they saw each other at the clinic killed him right then and there but my point is you know what security did no and this is on their property because mm-hmm. honestly on their property or not on their property they can't do shit this was on their property and not one security guard even it's sad. Like that that, it, sad. It goes, it goes full circle. The price of life is fucking cheap out here. Do you think they need something other than basic security? Like, I mean, because it well, just... at one point, not to cut you off, at one point, it was getting so bad. And again, I don't know if you remember, they started getting a regular black and white cop that would sit in the parking lot. You know what I mean? But put it this way, like, if, if it'll never end, because if the cop's on the left, everybody's just going to go right and they're going to wait for the cop to leave and then they're going to go left again. You get what I'm saying? Like yeah. one cop, even if they had a whole squad, it's never going to stop. It's never going to stop. It, it really is in its own way. It's just like a vicious circle of death. You know what I mean? As long, put it this way, as long as there's still people out here that will buy drugs, there will always be drugs and there will always be somebody out here to fulfill that need. Always. And the cops can't stop it. Like, I can sit out here for an hour, and you can see the jump out boys, the feds, riding up and down Congress in minivans with the door open, ski masked up. 
they'll catch this, this, and that person. But guess what? If they catch three people, there's four people waiting to fill that spot, man. Just like anything, mm. just like a baseball team, just like a dictatorship. You know what I mean? We take down uh, uh, Saddam Hussein, there's three people waiting to take his spot. It's, it's that vicious circle of wow. life. You know what I mean? Yeah. But, um, it's sad. It's sad in its own way. Because again, like I have born New Haven tattooed on my back. I'm from here. And it's just, it's fucking sad. I mean, did you, do people like go into it seriously thinking like this place is going to help me change? I did. I yeah. Did. But there's also, there's also people that go up on their ghosts or just go there. Like, remember when I first signed up? It's good. Oh, you're on Netflix? I said, yeah, I just signed up. She's like, yeah, man, I get you fucked up. I'm like, what? Like, <laughs> but then it clicked. Like, uh -huh. there's people that are going just to get lit up. Just to get lit up. And again, I wouldn't say the system's broken on that. But it's just it's people, I guess, exploitation in its own way. You know what I mean? Yeah. But there's, I would probably say, honestly, like, eight out of ten people that go in there are doing it just to get fucked up or to sell their shit. You know what I mean? And, our people. I, and then there's oh, people like me, ahead, and there's people like me, who obviously, you know what I mean? I honestly, I do it to stay away from the other kind of shit. Yeah. But it's just, I'm not going to lie, methanol is just as bad as way. It's just as bad in its own way, but you know what? So, yeah, can I ask you another question? Yeah, go for it. You can ask me anything. What, what would have been helpful to you earlier? Like, what could have been the intervention for you before it came to homelessness, before it came to all the things? Like, what could have been in, in place for you? What could have been in place for me? Like, what could have helped me beforehand, you're saying? Yes. Like, what, what, like what could have helped you before, before everything just became problematic? Shit. I mean, honestly, people, like counselors, like, like, put it this way, not a lot of people know. You know the purple things they put on the corner now? No. You know what that's for? No. That's for people to put their dirty bricks into, put their dirty needles into. The person that, the, per, the person who did that and came up with that idea and actually put it out there was my counselor, Jay. He was clean. For oh, for 15, the swan team, he was clean right? 15 years. The week he put that out, he relapsed one time and died. My counselor. Guys, he's referring to someone I've interviewed a couple times named Jay. What's his last name? I forget his last name too, but he, yeah. No, I get it. But he was running the Swan Band. I remember him. He was a very nice guy. It is sad. Uh, I try to tell him, like, we can move, like, say me and you were dating, right? We have problems. We could move out to Colorado Rockies, but guess what? That one time we go into town, that person, that first person we meet, it's going to happen. It's everywhere. Yeah. And you can't get away from you have you have to get away from it. But what could have helped me, honestly, I've been through everything. Like, like literally, I was so desperate to get off heroin. I used to take a shot called Vivitrol. Not a lot of people hear about yeah. Vivitrol is like the like highest of the highest they get off the thing. It's really? it's um a shot. Yeah, and they gotta good. shoot in your ass like a six foot needle, yeah, well. and uh, it lasts for thirty yeah. days. Yeah. And I was taking that. I was doing anything and to go full circle, it's because there was no other way. Like you asked what could have happened? Listen, the system's so broken. Like I finally realized nobody's gonna help me but me at that point. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. But like now think about it. My whole counselor was getting high, bro. Yeah. So how the fuck, you know what I'm saying? How are you gonna help me when you're getting high? You know what I mean? I understand. Yeah, that's so it came down, what could have stopped it? Honestly, myself, I could have stopped it if I knew what I know now back then. And when that happened, that must have put even more perspective how it's you're really on your own. Yeah. Again, I've always said this, one of my many sayings, you line up 100 people asking the same question, you get 100 different answers. Everybody's different. What I think is what works for me might not work for the next man. You know what I mean? But again, I see people get their heads, I see people get shot in the head out here no reason. I see people get stabbed, no reason. Um, everything. I've seen everything under the sun out here. I see, sadly, I've seen chicks get beat up. I see chicks get raped out. Like, it's bad. And again, you ask just clinic wise, what can the cops do? Bro, think about what I just said. Where the fuck are the cops, anyways? 
Mm-hmm. This is a daily. This is a daily fucking thing. I don't mean to swear. I swear. Around. It's okay. So, this is a daily thing, and especially like being born and raised here, it's fucking sad. It's so you're clean see. now. Yeah. You're focused. Yes. Yeah. But how long exactly did it take for you to get here? So get clean. Yeah. It took forever. You know? I mean, um, <laughs> like it took years. Yeah. It took years. And you know what? They used to tell me when I was still using, like, it's, every day's a battle, blah, blah, blah. There's so much truth in that, it's not even funny. Like, even now, where we're at, in the back of my mind, it's, I see, yeah. you know what I mean? You yeah. see what's walking by You're us. Right. You already know. And it's like, I'm the type of dude. Like, it's all tough. around. I don't care what you got to do, but just take it around the corner. Now, why do I do that? Because even if you talk about, yo, gee, man, I want to do this, this, and that, woo, woo. You just planted. It's not your fault, but you just planted the seed now. You're right. I'm bro, but you planted the seed of destruction in my head. Now I want to go out and do something stupid. Now to go full circle again. That's why I don't even. I come out here once a week. That's why I don't even want to come out here once a week. And it's to the point so bad. I'm about to walk off the clinic because, again, it's it's. There's times I don't. But it's almost like a guarantee if I'm out here on Thursday, mm. I'm going to do something stupid. I cannot believe they won't let yeah, you I tell switch. Them, I tell them that straight up, verbatim, word for word. Nothing's changed. So you tell me how much they care. You know? They want you to be sick. Think about it. Mm-hmm. If I get clean and get off the clinic, that's one less person yeah. paying the clinic. Think about it. It all comes down to money and grief. Isn't that crazy, Bob? People don't care. Not a lot of people even know that every time that car gets swiped, they're getting paid by the state. I don't know how they don't know that, but think about it. That's why they watch you on that shit forever. So do you have a fear? So every time you come once a yep. week, do you have that fear that you might relapse? I mean, how how present I'm out is here that right in now, your mind? Third, listen, I'm out here right now because it's my one day a week and just looking down the street. Yeah, right now. Wait, you right only now. Co- how do you only come one day a week? Because I started pissing food. Oh, good. Okay. I got six bottles. Oh, so if you are clean, they will let you take more home. Okay. But even and right the- now, just looking down the street, you know, just check my hot shit. Half my brain's like, you know, no. Put it this way. I say it like this, too. If it was that easy to get off drugs, there'd be no such thing as addiction anyways. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? If you could just do heroin and just yeah. check your, and just bounce off it, there'd be no such thing as addiction, right? Where do you want to go to school? Shit. I would love to go anywhere for school, but um, I had big aspirations when I was a kid. Like, um, like I never know, told you. Like I said, we've known each other for a little while, but like, um, I played soccer my whole life. This is a quick story. When I was fourteen, I started trying out for a team. It took me two years to make the team. I made the USA under sixteen. I went to England, Sweden, and Denmark. Oh my it's god! It's called the Copa Cup. There's fifty-two different countries in it. Um, it's basically like the Super Bowl in soccer for juniors. You know what I mean? What up, house? So, but uh, long story short, just that, like, huh? No, I'm talking to her real quick. I'll talk to you uh, in a second. All right. But um, I had a, a, a good life, like, literally. I went to England, Sweden, and Denmark yeah. to play soccer. I was the only kid from Connecticut that made that team. Like, um, I want to, at that point, I'm not going to say I want to go like Yale or something like that. I'm just a humble guy. But you knew you so wanted to do big things. I wanted to do th- at least things. Yeah. You know? But um, now, honestly, I'll, that's what I mean. I just signed back up for Gateway. I'll go anywhere. You signed be choosers. back for Gateway? Yeah. Awesome. Beggars can't be choosers. Though. I want to better myself. But again, you have you have days where you come out here. And it's just like uh, it brings you right back to square one. Yeah. You no. know what I mean? I'm trying to take myself. Put it this way: it's like if I was in a hole, I dug myself out. Right, three quarters of my body's out the hole. I just gotta get my last leg out that hole. Yeah. You know what I mean? And did uh, what well, addiction wise, all it takes is two seconds. Two seconds. You could be. I know dudes that were clean. What's his name? Wait, I want to ask you, say, yeah, though, what, can you tell me about the first time? The first time I got high. Yeah. And how it happened. The first time I got high. So what happened was, Perk 30s were a big thing. 
and that shit's true. And saying people, blah blah blah. I never believed, at least with pot, the gateway like leads you. This leads you to that. Until this happened, the first time I got high, it was per thirties I used to do, and obviously painkillers. I got addicted to them. I used to get them for fifteen bucks, and then they went to twenty bucks, twenty five, and they went to thirty dollars a pill. And I'm like, holy shit, bro! I can't, I can't afford it. <laughs> this was around here. It was um, I was living in East Haven. Okay. But it's everywhere. You know what I mean? How old were you? I was young. I don't even know why I say I was young. I was young because I'm embarrassed. No, Long it's okay. Short, you know who put heroin in front of me for my first time? My best friend. My best friend. Yo, do this. Because I was the last one out of the group. I was the oldest in the group. But I was the last one out of the group to touch diesel. Because I've seen what it did to my brother and blah, blah, blah. Woo, woo. It was my best friend. Like they say in the Godfather, it's the ones closest to you that are gonna get you. I think about that too. I play on that. Like, damn, my best friend was the one that put me. But granted, nobody put a gun in my head. Nobody, I could have said no. You know what I mean? I could have easily said no. But it was someone you trusted, and it was somebody yeah. I trusted. And, uh, it's just sadly, I hate to say it, but that shit is. It's so strong. Like it's got you. It's got you from the jump. I don't, give a shit that anybody says. The second you do that and you feel that fucking high, and then you come down, you're like, yo, I want to get there again. It's old. It's got you. It's got you. It, it's fucking got you. And misery loves company. And that's like misery in a fucking pill. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? And But the thing that gets me, again, I'm, well, that's why I'm going to be a counselor, because it's like, if they know that the FDA and all that shit, why haven't they tried to change it? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, put it this way. When I used to do per third, just crush them up and sniff them. Why haven't they tried to make them like anti sniff? You get what I'm saying? Like, yeah. there's so many fucking different things they could do, or avenues they could at least explore. They don't want, I, I don't know what it is. I can't really, because it might be something else, but you get the gist of what I'm saying. I there's always another option to change it for the better or for the worse, but nothing's getting fucking changed. You know? Like, even me. I'll never forget it because I've been through a lot. A dude came up to me one time off that lunch. He said, I'm the chief editor, you to respect this, chief editor for Yale University's newspaper. Uh-huh. I want to do, I heard about you, Jay, and your story. And I want to do a story on your life. I told him, shit. I said, bro, get the fuck out of here. Because I'm thinking to myself, Yale University was some mm-hmm. presidents came out of. And I, all the people is do watch some talk. Yeah, my story, get the fuck out of here. So I'm sleeping under a fucking bridge. I'll never, I'll never forget a hand to God. It's like 10 o'clock at night, and this dude rolls up on me. I actually pulled a knife out on him because I thought he was trying to rob me. He's that fucking guy. And you know what? He the Yale a, guy? He did a story on my life. Oh, my so God. Know. But you know what I did at that time? I told him nothing but the truth like this. Yeah. But at the same point in time, I saw myself almost like an advocate because I show people the story all the time. Look, it's already up there. Watch. First thing that pops up, taking it to the streets, fighting for food, housing, and health. Oh my god! Uh, I'm that serious. Look at this. You know, so my, how did that make you feel? Jason and Mandy request to use Jason, 13, a 33 year old living on the streets of New Haven, was sitting under an overhang trying to stay out the rain. When his phone was finally charged, I was checking voicemails for housing, yeah. jobs. Um, there's a quote for me: "Worst thing about the rain is once you're wet, you're done." Jason. So you ended up doing it. Yeah. Yep. What changed your mind? Because like I, you said, wanted- I wanted to advocate and really tell them how bad it is. Like, um, like this, unlike, unlike Mandy and Jason, those in the shelters were first to be moved. Blah, blah, blah. Says why I don't go in the shelter. You know why? Because I personally found out there's dudes that weren't even homeless, but we're going shelter to shelter, mm-hmm. just waiting for dudes to fall asleep to steal their shit. Um, and-, and it says, where can we go? The overflow shelters this is a quote for me. The overflow shelter is not even open, Jason said. For now, the two are sleeping in an abandoned building, me and my pregnant girl. Sleeping in an abandoned building. At night, Jason, me, takes off his clothes, pulling his shirt, overcoat, and hoodie on the ground with blankets created makeshift bed for Mandy. Yeah. I used to do that every night for my girl. But Where I were you? Which, like, was she? Abandoned houses. I mean, I was over here. We used to call it Big Blue. There was two abandoned houses over there. Um, and then once they boarded up the house, they had an abandoned Cadillac that used to be in the back. I used to sleep in there until I got no beef with somebody out here and they poured gasoline on everything I owned. 
So wow. I had to, yeah, I lost everything. And um, how long have you and Mandy been together now? Almost three years now. And how is the baby? How old? Yeah. She's almost two. She's almost two. two. Courtney, Courtney, hold that thought right, you know, right Absolutely. quick. Um, okay. You're, li- you're listening to Love Babs Love Talk on WNHH LP 103.5 FM, your home for community radio. You're listening to Word on the Street. Okay, go ahead, Courtney. <laughs> well, I guess to wrap it up here, I mean, tell me, I guess, what any last words or any message you have any for someone else? To anybody that's going to see this, honestly, don't be a fucker. Don't be stupid. You know what I mean? If something inside you is telling you, don't take that fucking ride. Don't talk to this dude. He's shady. Don't take that pill. Honestly, again, I hate to say it. See if dudes hollering at me. Everybody knows me. I like, sadly, even at 35, I'm the, I was the poster child for almost fucking almost 10 years. But honestly, enjoy life, live your life. People think living life is is you're from the hill, staying in the hill and going to get something to eat. I'm talking about living life, like mm. save your money, go to fucking Switzerland, go see the world. You know what I mean? I finally get that now. But um, and another thing, life is cheap. And you never know when your last moment is. We can hang up right now across the street and get back by a car. Life is cheap. But honestly, whatever you're going to do, just do it right. Don't, don't be a screw up. Like I said, my senior year of high school, it's not like, oh, what do you want to be when you get out of here, Jay? I want to be a homeless fucking drug addict. That's not what I want. Mm-hmm. But just, if you're on the right path, just, man, I'm fucking bad. Like, I'm telling you, the streets... I wouldn't wish it on my worst enemy out here because it's, it's fucking brutal. Yeah. It really is brutal. But at the same point in time, there's so much that could be done to help the situation and maybe rectify some wrongs. But it, it takes a lot a lot of different people and not everybody's putting in the time and the strength they can. But, well, I can't wait to write this follow-up. Yeah, like, yeah. we have the Yale one out, but now we have the one where you're doing yeah. good. And when do you have work? Today? Not today. Okay. So, all right. I'm looking for another job too. It's not nothing. I'm gonna work, work, work. Yeah. Especially well, support your daughter and all that, right? Exactly. She's everything. Well, I so hard. appreciate your I appreciate your time. Yeah, and your realness, because I think you yeah. you represent. Isn't he so real? That's why I love yeah. it. Well, we never get to we never get to hear from people who going through it, right? So, I mean, it's honest to God, a real person that we could talk to and see. What, what their life is like. So well, I, that, I appreciate I you. Give you I can give you a contact number for myself. So if you guys ever want another dose of reality. <laughs> I love it. Thank you. Thank so you thank you, Courtney. This was, this was, this was, this was amazing. The best interview yet. Thank you. This thank was you. amazing. Thank you. Thank you.